I got the cedar back in the shop. Uh, a while back, a guy was asking me if I'd had trouble with the with the chains on this, throwing chains. He said his is, was brand new and was throwing chains all the time. And uh, I had not had any trouble at all with this until here just recently, probably about the last two weeks I've been throwing chains. So I've got it back in. I'm going to tear this thing apart and uh, see what's going on. I've got one more plant I need to do, and I'm done with this. But uh, I think I can take care of this um, chain issue. I might might take a little bit of doing, but I think it looks like the um, kind of the tube frames sort of slip down through the U-bolts. So that's my guess right now, but once I get into it, I'll know a little bit more. So what I'm dealing with here is I mean, you've got a, a bearing here with a sprocket inside this, chain that runs through here, goes up onto another sprocket up in here, drives a shaft, this shaft here, you got a chain in here, runs up here. This drives the all of this mechanism here. It turns the paddle wheel that uh, dispenses the seed. And uh, so you lose a chain. You see right here. I mean, look at how how loose that thing is. And uh, I had taken the one apart in the field. And the bolt had actually backed out of the sprocket, and the sprocket had walked off the, uh, or walked on the shaft, not off it. Uh, just enough to get it misaligned to where it was, it was popping the chain off. So I got that back in, but that chain should not be that loose and sticking out the bottom like that. Now, there aren't a whole lot of adjustments that you can do with that. Um, you know, it's, you know, there's just nothing in there that's made for adjusting that chain length. Um, this chain here, I could probably, you know, take these two bolts here, which mount this, um, this bearing, and slot this here and here so that I can move that bearing and tighten up that chain a little bit. In doing that, I'd have to modify this. It's going to drop the bale down a little bit more, so it's a bit of a mess. Damn, that sneeze. So, I'm gonna pull this apart and start seeing if I can uh, get to the bottom of this. But all these covers here have gotta come off. Well, this doesn't look good. So this has been rubbing on that for quite some time. And I've got so much slack in it, I can't I can touch these things. Oh, that's not good, look at there. This housing is loose. That might be something. Oh, didn't notice that. Get this thing in. Tilt it back up, that tightens that chain back up. Lucky there. Where she gets up like that. Huh. Well, I don't know. What in the world? You know, I gotta figure out. Let's see. So that's welded on there. Look here. There it is. Bolts are just both of them completely loose, and I'll be damned. Well, there you go. That will certainly solve that. We don't have to solve it. But help it. We'll go from that. That's where it's sitting to that. Let's 
It's got some good clearance there. Probably about where that needs to be, so. Well, I'll be darned. Okay. That's interesting. Let's check the other side. This side here is tight. Again, this side here, that chain is... a little bit better. It has been rubbing on that a little bit, but not too terribly bad. All right. Again, this does have a, you can see this in there, it does have a master link. So if I did need to knock a, a link out, I could do that. That's good, that's good to know. But that side's tight. So it was this side of the screw up. I'll be down. All right, let me get that taken care of. Just want to pry up on that. Definitely looks better. Still a lot of play in the chain, but that's not coming off. Good deal. All right. So that took care of that one. I got to come down here, pull the cover off this one down here. So I'm taking this lower chain off. This is something I wish they'd never do. I mean, little tiny ass little 10 millimeter bolts and nuts on these things. You know, it's got no place on a piece of farm equipment. I mean, trying to keep these things and not lose them. And fine thread. Just, come on, man. Keep up with something a little better than that. Yeah, lock nuts, that's a saving grace. Tighten this little things.
here. That one is off the sprocket. Flash on here. So we'll get this back on and then we'll have to see where we are as far as tightness on this one. Alright, one thing I see right off the bat is that this is moving in and out like this. It should not be doing that. There is a set screw and a hole right there that that set screw is supposed to be into. Keep that from doing that. So that would take care of one little issue. Pop this chain on. Goes. Yeah, we got to stop that from water all over the place in there. That's, that's not good at all. Alright. Now this thing here, it has two set screws in it. So one here and the other one is in the hole over here. Let's see this or not. That hole right there goes into a hole in the shaft and holds it in place. So, that's back where it's supposed to be. So then I come back up here. And uh, I start spinning this. Chain's moving, but that chain's not moving. That's not good. So, back up in here, this is just sliding on and off. So that's got a bolt. Right there, it's supposed to go into a slot. Almost like a keyway in the shaft. So that's obviously backed out. That's, I'm surprised I didn't lose the bolt because that's, uh, that's loose as can be. So the next thing is to get that back in the slot and get it tightened in. Still haven't dealt with the chain tightness issue yet. One step at a time. For design things, you can kind of see it here. You can't tighten that set bolt with the chain on. So you have to pull the chain off, get your uh, sprocket where it needs to be, wind that in, and put your chain back on. So, now, looking at this thing, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do with this as far as tightening this lower chain up. There isn't a whole lot. If uh, the only thing we might have going for us, but again, I don't, I don't think this is going to work because the whole thing would have to slide down. And you see, this is basically just a use my finger in here. This is just a tube, rectangle, the tube in there. If I could slide that down, clamp it back in with these these U U bolts, that would tighten everything up. But you know, this is connected to everything. It's a fairly good slot in there, so it might move. I might have to give that a shot. See if I, that might tighten this this drum. That'll drop all this stuff down this way drop the bale down but, uh, that'll be for tomorrow so tomorrow I'm gonna take the chain off put the sprocket where it needs to be measure off this make sure both sprockets are equal distant from fixed point and then um, be about the best alignment I can do for them and then I'm gonna Pull these off here. These U-bolts. We're gonna run the U-bolts through. Straight bolts with a um, plate in between them. So, that'll be tomorrow. 
After sleeping on this last night, I realized that probably doing what I did, which is you know, prying this up to tighten this up, wasn't the thing to do. It needs to it needs to sit on this deck, so I need to use these slots and loosen that back up and drive this whole thing this way until that chain tightens up. So that's the one thing. And, uh, and again, I got to dig into this this one here. Let's see what I can do to get the slack taken out of that. Well, that's what we're gonna do this morning. Right behind this, move this over. Put some tension on that. It's a little odd, but <clears throat> when you start lining these up, this, this bottom sprocket is going to be all, all the way out or in. It'll give me about an inch and a half off the inside of this bar, the top one. This one here has got to be pushed almost all the way in to give me an inch and a half off that bar. So, probably about the best alignment that I can do. It just seems a little odd that it would be like that, but it's... That's the way it's working out. I don't know what's not square. Everything looks okay. I guess this right here is not square. This is what's kind of throwing me off. The cover guard right there is not, not square. All right, let's get them locked in. Chain put back on. All right, so I'm going to tap on this right here. I can't draw that down. Yeah, that's, that is completely loose. All right, so I got to get something in there, see if I can't pry that down and hold it out. Check the chain tension and then tighten these back up. Chain tension's really bad. It's just hanging in there. All right, so that did seem to fix it. So I've got just about a, about a half an inch of play in there on that chain. Kind of odd that it wants to sit up there right on the, the nut for the bolt that goes through here for this spacer. It's really not good, but this bottom one is in this way all, as far as it can go. So I just stuck my foot under here, pushed this out, and tightened these two here, clamped that thing in. It went in probably three quarter of an inch. So that's where your tension for this comes from. So I'm gonna snug that thing way down, tight as I can get it. Cause that's, that's a little shaky jake. You know, you don't have a whole lot, a whole lot of bite up here on the top on that tube. But, um, Hopefully this will work. All right, it's pretty well snug down. Everything rolls nice and free and nice and easy. I don't hear any rubbing, I don't hear any binding. Ooh, that chain looks not really square to the frame, but. Hopefully this will be okay. As good as it's gonna get, I think. All right, I think that's pretty much taken care of it. Everything is spinning and working. Chains are snug. Got a little bit of, about a half an inch of play in them. All right, that's it. So the long and the short of it is, is the this chain adjustment's here. Lower chain adjustments, those two 17 millimeters. Let's slide that bar down. And sliding that bar down actually helped because we've had some issues also with getting the um, 
the front discs in same depth as the back discs and uh, it's there's really nothing you can do about it it's, once you try to get the front driven down then the bale comes up off the ground and then you aren't spinning anything so this may actually help a little bit so because we're driving it you know, this bale down at an angle so we might have gained a little bit there it might help level this thing out and get the disc you know going in at the same depth that's another issue somebody brought up dude. so now i got to deal with all this cosmetic stuff so all of a sudden this year you know i planted about four or five different plots up there so i left this up in the field i mean good lord the surface rust just went crazy on this thing this year so i got a lot of grinding and priming to do now get this thing get protected and back to where it'll last me as long as it will last me it's holding up fairly well right now but a little disappointed to see all the spot rust coming up i don't know what kind of uh, paint they had on this thing you see i'm even i'm getting it in uh, inside here too Real here, the spots down in here, and that's not good. So I'll get these wire wheeled up and paint it up. Got one more little patch to plant, and then this will be put up for the for the year. The one thing I do on these is when you bring these in from being out of doors and washing this down. These discs will rust up like crazy. So, you know, go buy a gallon jug of WD-40 and some spray bottles and just hose those things down and uh, just soak them. The WD-40 will creep on them and, and uh, actually put enough of a machine on there to keep them from, uh, from rusting up. Because every time it rusts, you know, you're losing a little bit of a little bit of steel and there's not much steel on these things. So, I figure the longer you can keep them lubed up and, and and go into the, the better off you'll be in the end because I, I wouldn't want to have to replace those things they're probably expensive as hell